Hi guys, Duke Delate here for The Attractive Man, and I wanted to go over breakups, getting over your ex, and then rising from the ashes like a phoenix to uh, get back into the game and find yourself that partner that is perfect for you. I'm going to go over some coping strategies to deal with loss and grief and how to view the other person so that everybody can grow from it and how to use the experience as a springboard to get even better at your game in the video to follow. Stay tuned. I'm Matt. Many boot camps encourage men to be assertive. My name is Josiah. Josiah is a master at day game. Love you. Four, six, seven. We've done all the testing. We know what works. Ah, oh, you just break up with a girl. She either broke up with you or you broke up with her, but something happened that you guys were not seeing eye to eye anymore, and uh, it is, it is painful. It hurts, and uh, it can take you out of all of your productivity through the rest of your whole life. It's funny, there's so many songs on the radio that just talk about breaking up and all the pain and the craziness that's going on with that kind of loss. But what is that? It's loss, right? It's something that you were attached to somebody else and now you don't have them anymore and it's difficult to go on in the same way that you were going. There's like, it's not there, it's like, it's like you were, you were walking with a crutch and now the crutch is gone and, and now you have to regain your balance by yourself and it's, it's just bad news. I, um, there's no easy way to get over breakups. There's a bunch of ways to reframe it, and we'll go over that. There's some coping strategies, we'll go over some of those. But um, pain is pain, and emotional pain is something that's common to us being human, and it's difficult to deal with, and that's kind of how it's supposed to be. So we're going to deal with some coping strategies. First coping strategy I use right when I get out of a breakup, and I just got out of a breakup, that's why I'm talking about this stuff, um, is you know eventually you're going to have to deal with seeing her again or seeing her friends or getting reminded of her or whatever and those things are just going to come up it's going to suck right but just like any other bad feeling that keeps you from from doing the things that you want to do uh just like approach anxiety or you know fear of public speaking and stuff you can reframe it really quickly or you can change your state really fast and it will remove the sting of that feeling the emotion will still be there it'll kind of back burner it though so that you can still focus on something else right one of the coolest ways we straight state change is we'll clap our hands or we'll change our body uh structure we'll focus on our breathing we'll focus on uh things that we're not normally focused on to so give it space to uh, not focus on the pain and the loss and the grief and the hate and the and all that stuff as it comes in a kind of overwhelming deluge of feelings all the feelings it will uh, it will kind of get mitigated by the fact that you're thinking about something else you're focusing on something else so change your state a lot of the guys the attractive man what they do is they'll take cold showers and just like snap their their brain out of whatever it's impossible and you dunk your head under cold running water to who remain in the same same mental state that you were when you got in there. It's just impossible, and it's uh, super effective. So uh, check that out. And then, uh, you know, when you when it comes on like a song on the radio that makes you think about it, you, you tend to want to sort of indulge in those feelings. And there are a couple ways to go about that. You can either indulge in those feelings and, and get sad and then sort of repeat the grief loop over and over and over again. Uh, or you can change state immediately and like move to a different song, sing something else, like, like just get your brain out of that space. Um, or the third way, which I've been doing lately, is burning that thing to the ground. And this is one of my favorite coping strategies. Okay, so if I get uh, hurt and then something reminds me of her and I'm like, oh, heart-wrenching craziness, right? I put that thing on repeat for the next hour. Right? And eventually, what happens is you're singing along, you want to cry, you didn't sing, you're driving, and you can't. I'm not saying that I cry, you know, I'm a man, right? But, okay, but yeah, so you're, you're doing that thing, and uh, then the second time goes through, it gets a little bit more boring, and the emotions don't come. And the third time goes through, it gets a little bit more boring, and the emotions don't come. And then the same thing happens over and over and over again. You get it done with like a half hour of listening to the same song, you're like, okay, that song does not give me the same emotions as it did before. And it kind of works the same way.
same way progressive desensitization works when it comes to dealing with fear is that thing that gave you such strong emotional responses it needs like a refractory period in between time to keep its strength after that it starts getting diluted with the other things that are going on in your day like you go to start dealing with traffic and the song is playing and you start dealing with you know you get out and, you, and you're walking along and you're shopping that, that, that it's distracting you and the song is playing and all those little reference experiences start getting tied to the song and it dilutes the strength that it had with the uh, with the other person and it, it's really helpful in just sort of taking the legs out from other the, the strength of those feelings that is some washing over you much in the same way as state change you want to do I call this the midlife crisis method okay um, whenever I break up with somebody I go get a haircut I go uh, I change my close just a little bit, I start going to the gym more, I uh, start eating healthier, I use it kind of like a New Year's resolution kind of thing where I start changing everything because you know the initial launch is like okay next time she sees me I have to be better than I was right but it, it quickly metamorphosizes into a focus of being better just being better and just renewing who you were as an individual before you guys broke up because a lot of times when two people get together they sort of share each other so much that they lose part of their own identity while they're in the relationship which is why it hurts so much when the relationship breaks off because uh, now it's, it's kind of like you're missing a part of yourself so use the time Time to focus on renewal, to focus on building yourself and your um, kind of latent uses back into focus. Bring all that stuff back into focus and get yourself on track to um, to to become a fuller, more vibrant version of you. Once you do that, uh, the focus on those things is going to help you to uh, get over the hard emotional things that come up when when you're thinking about your ex because you're, you're you there's kind of a light at the end of the tunnel rather than thinking oh I'm never gonna get anybody like as good as her again you go okay well I'm working on this and I'm gonna meet some cool new people it's gonna be great you know you go out and go be social you're like oh I met all these new people already uh, oh you know you don't necessarily want to replace her with somebody else but when you're out and you're you're talking it's like it, this sh you know running games seeing new girls like it it gives you Reference experience says, oh yeah, she's not the only one out there. She's not the one that, and she didn't match anyway. Maybe I'll find somebody who matches better. Putting yourself in that perspective and focusing on your own personal renewal, you as an individual, uh, goes a long way to mitigating the uh, crushing feelings that can come from sharing space with another person for a very long time. Keep in mind that if you break up with somebody, that means that you guys have reached a point in your communication that you guys weren't compatible. In real life, when people break up, they do it for one of two reasons. One, to manipulate the other person into doing something. Or two, because they don't match. If you don't match, you don't want that relationship back, I promise. It will just happen again and again and again ad infinitum until you guys are both fucking sick of each other and you want to kill each other. Right? That it, you can just, it can only end poorly if that's the reason. The other one is to manipulate the other person. If she breaks up with you because she was giving you an ultimatum and she wanted you to change but she didn't really want to lose you, then she breaks up with you. Um, she's still trying to offer that ultimatum and uh, it's still going to screw with you. Right? In almost no circumstance does it make sense to get back together with somebody after a breakup. Now there are some that do. You guys are so connected and it's great and the breakup was just like a momentary hiccup or a drunken bullshit and then but now you guys are missing trust on each other's ability to stay in the relationship and so it actually becomes more labored and stuff. One of my relationships I've been dating for a very long time, like seven years, and uh, she finally broke up with me like for the third time and just kicked me out and it was a just big horrible ordeal. And uh, when she wanted me back, I said, look, we can't date like we used to. Otherwise, we're just going to keep replaying the same cycle over and over again. Let's build something new. Let's create a new relationship out of the ashes of the old one because the old one wasn't working. All those expectations and all that communication wasn't working. And so we started something very, very different. She's no longer like, we're not shooting for the future anymore. We're not trying to like be anybody's baby mama. <laughs> you know, like all of those important things that were happening over that long relationship were kind of put to bed. That relationship was kind of frozen. We created a new one that uh, is more advantageous to both of us in our current states as we stand now. Um, but otherwise, like in all cases, the relationship is dead, right? If you want to see her again in public, the, who she was and what you guys had together 
it's gone. Like it's not, uh, it's not the same as it used to be and it never will be. Uh, you guys have done too much to each other in through the breakup process that you can't just like turn that stuff off and then come back in and expect everything to be hunky-dory and okay. Just assume that that's the case. And if you engage with her again, you engage with her on a human level, on an individual level that isn't backed up by all of the, the tears of your relationship that, that allowed you guys to stand on your own strength before because those tears ultimately failed you and took your whole relationship out. They are going to fail you again. It's better to just assume that all that stuff's gone and it's, it's all in the past, it's frozen, you can't get to it. And then you can, if you're gonna talk to her again, you're gonna create um, a new relationship with new boundaries and new feelings and new decisions. So those are some coping mechanisms. Now I kinda wanna talk about some strategies for dealing with the other human, right? Um, when you break up with a girl, sometimes it's best just to cut off contact entirely. Like there's just no speaking, no contact, no nothing. Um, you know, obviously if there are kids involved, if there's like, you know, shared property and stuff, that's like a different story. But uh, if you can, just cut it all off and just give you guys time to heal and you guys can come back with a more uh, fresh perspective without all the pain, right? If you do have to talk to her again, the most high level way to deal with it is with gratitude. It's with kind of thanking her for the good times that you had, really, really appreciating her for the good qualities and the ways that she made you grow and the things that she made you see, the experiences she helped, helped you have. You take all of that stuff that you're grateful for, take all the things that kept you in the relationship, take all of those things and just thank her for those things periodically as you're, as you're communicating with whatever else you need to communicate with. Right. Um, if you're talking about stuff or if you're talking about, you know, meeting up and exchanging things or mutual friends or whatever, you'd be like, you know, you know, I know our relationship's over, but um, but I really appreciated how I grew. And and thank you so much for sharing that time with me. It definitely wasn't a waste. It was awesome. Uh, and then as you're doing that and when you focus on the good parts of the relationship, it keeps your RAS from going in like demonizing or vilifying the other person. It, it keeps your RAS from like, like going in and selectively focusing on all the bad stuff. A lot of people use that as a coping mechanism and they like talk all the shit about the human uh, in their mind so that they can give themselves kind of a severance between them and that other person. The problem is, is it's not entirely authentic. If you do a severance with another person, you say, hey, uh, she was a total bitch and she's really stupid and she's cunty to me all the time and her friends are stupid and she's a sloppy eater and da 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 right? But on the inside, you still miss snuggling her. You still miss the times you had together or whatever. It's a dissonance and it makes you feel like shit in both ways. And I say, you know what? Don't do that. Focus on all the good stuff, right? and be grateful for the experience that you had. Like when you get off of a roller coaster, right? And it was a really good time. You remember the good times. You don't remember all the weird, crazy times you were scared. You don't remember all the, the long wait line. You just remember the good times and that's a good thing because it's over, right? If you go to go do it again, then you're gonna remember the wait time. You're gonna remember all that stuff, but that's over. It's over, it's game over. So you can go back and remember, cherish those memories in the positive light, right? Only if you want to start it up again should you remember all the things that you should be cautious of, right? And in my experience, you should not start it up again. You should go renew yourself and go find somebody new or go find a new her after she's grown a little bit and try that again from a new place, from a more mature, uh, evolved place. Because you're using this breakup and you're using the relationship as something that uh, can sort of launch you into the next level as a man. The second way I deal with uh, other people is gratitude. Not only gratitude, but introspection, right? I just start thinking, okay, how could I have done this better? How could I have done this better? How could I have done this better? And uh, not how could they have done this better because those answers are usually readily apparent. But if you ask how I could have done it better, uh, then you start coming up with better strategies on dealing with relationships both with her in the future and with other women in the future because you're learning a lot from the feedback that you got from that relationship. You say, how could I have done this better? Like in my last relationship, I was traveling a lot. So when I was in town, I was trying to uh, get as much time with her as possible. And doing that made me come off as a little needy and it made her feel stressed out for me to be around. And that was just the wrong thing for me to do. And knowing that means that the next relationship, I'm either going to find a woman who enjoys that kind of attention or I'm going to not do that in order to save my relationship because 
uh, being able to look at it from the outside and being introspective was like, what drove me to be like that? Why was I stressing her out? Why was I doing that stuff? That was because I felt like I wasn't getting enough time and I was, I was getting a little graspy about it. I learned that about myself and it's not going to be an issue for me in the future and it's going to help me in future relationships. Introspection is very, very important along with gratitude as strategies for dealing with the other person and dealing with yourself as you're growing. So when you're focusing on self-renewal, there's a couple of rules. First off, you are enough. A lot of times when you get out of a relationship, you're sort of connected to the other human in a way that's in a, in a codependent way, not interdependent, not like two individuals helping each other out, not two individuals and the relationship entity, you know, working in synergy. It's more like two individuals sharing with each other and then when they break off, they're missing parts of each other and that is just not... Uh, a healthy way to deal with life's problems and the things they throw at you. Sometimes it's, it's, it's okay to dip into that when you're too weak to deal yourself and other people can build you up. It takes a village sometimes, but uh, most of the time if you rely on that stuff then you're unable to make your own decisions and unable to do your own self-care. That's not good. So uh, you want to understand that as you're renewing yourself that you as an individual are enough to handle you. You lead you. You handle you. And uh, knowing that you are enough uh, to, to do all that stuff gives you the opportunity in your introspection to come up with ways to be more and more full version or next level version of you so that you can take you to the next level. And as you take you to the next level, then you can meet people who are on a higher level than your ex. Secondly, when you're doing your introspection, you have to take massive action to fix the things that aren't as high percentage for you, the things that are screwing you up, right? If you have some uh, needy behavior or if you have some insecurities that are coming up, focus on finding those things and then take a bunch of action to fix those things. For me, I always felt kind of uh, physically insecure because I was a little bit overweight and my, my health problems were having some issues. So as soon as I broke up, I used all the extra resources, the extra time to... Uh, to jump right into the gym and start working out and feeling healthier and, and eradicating that insecurity. And it's going to take me a little while to get to a good, good, healthy weight, but chipping away at that stuff is going to make me feel a lot more confident in the things that were taking me out uh, through the whole time. And we can go forward and do confidence stuff and approach and all that stuff, all we want, but sometimes things stick with us over time. And if we don't address them, we're going to need to address them eventually. And having the time post breakup uh, to think about you know all the ways that you broke up or uh, you can focus on fixing some of those insecurities I'd rather focus on fixing things uh, than not and the last thing when you're focusing on renewal is to avoid replacing the other person I recommend staying out of a relationship for at least three months uh, because while you're doing all of your self-care and all in all of your coming back up and, and, and being a better individual and going to the next level as a man, you're going to meet new people along the way that are going to be fantastic relationship partners. And those new people, you can bring them in, you can date them, you can have sex, you can do all the stuff that you want, but stop trying to plan a future on the new people. Just sort of let it unfold and kind of see what goes on because you have a lot of opportunity to learn from the dating scene while you're there and single to jump right into a relationship just so you can use your old strategies and expect the other person to act like the old person to meet your old needs. Uh, it sort of stops your growth. So I'm not saying don't go out and date. Go out and date. I'm not saying don't go out and date. Definitely go do that. But don't, um, don't try to replace the old person with the new person. Love the new person for who they are and create a relationship around them uh, that is sort of distant from the kind of relationship that you had, the frozen one that you had with the other, with your ex. So now that you've dealt with the loss and the grief and you're kind of moving forward and each day gets a little bit more and more easier, um, I want you not only to work on some of your insecurities and like go back to the gym and do all these healthy cool things, but also get back into the game. When you get back into the game, there's a couple of pitfalls guys run into. Sometimes they're expecting the women in the field to be as awesome and amazing and at relationships and boundaries and everything as their girlfriend. That is not true. Uh, most of the girls that you go out and meet are not going to be attuned to you. They're not going to have grown together. They're not have created uh, you know, memories and rapport and everything with you. That's not, that's not going to have happened. So uh, you're going to get into these relationships that if you expect them to be super high level without doing all the work to build them individually, you're just going to fail. That's, it's just going to, it's going to be horrible. And so um, when you get back in a relationship, understand you're going to focus on the basics. You're going to go out and run real game from ground uh, zero, from, from the ground up to build something new. That's the whole point of this thing. 
Secondly, sometimes you'll jump into new things to be distracted from the old relationship, and that's okay. It's okay to be in a new relationship, distracting yourself from the old one, because distraction is awesome, uh, especially when you're getting stimulated by all the cool feelings of chase of the chase and getting a new girl into your life. That's awesome. But understand that authenticity is the key. You don't want to roll in there and be like, oh yeah, I just need a new girlfriend and I'm going to be all this for you and probably make all these promises and stuff. When basically what you're doing is you're rolling into a rebound, right? doesn't mean that relationship can't work. It can and that's awesome, but it's not necessarily going to work and you should not act like it is, right? You should just be, look, this is where I'm at. I'm kind of broken. Here I am as a human and I want to spend some time with you. I think you're cool and uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. And when you do that, you give everybody uh, the dignity and the benefit of the doubt to build something out of the ashes of the old thing. In the meantime, you're getting dates, you're working on your game, and you're getting even better at filtering, getting better at setting boundaries, and getting better at uh, everything you are as a man. Once you change some of your insecurities from introspection, and then you go out and you start dating, and you start getting new people into your life, okay? Set new standards. After the relationship freezes and you no longer have that to lean on, you start to build yourself up as a man and you're kind of complete as a whole and you're moving out in the field and doing great and amazing things, um, though your standards should, should change. Your standards should be better than the ones in the past. Your ex, as she was, should no longer meet those standards anymore because you are better. By constantly growing and using the relationship as a jump point to the next level, uh, you can set your standards a little bit higher and then your ex and everybody like her will have to raise up in order to get your attention. You'll move yourself into a new level of the dating pool with new girls who are better suited to fit your needs and you are better suited to meet theirs. So those are my breakup strategies and my uh, getting over your ex and moving on into the next level of game. If you're ready for that and you want to move to the next level and focus on the basics and go out and do a whole bunch of game, we have live workshops in the link below and we have a couple of products on how to spark sexual chemistry. Check out that link over there. Check out the other Attractive Man videos to see us live in field doing actual pickup. I'm Duke Delate for The Attractive Man. See you soon.